Hey guys, this is sort of a spin-off to the professional fangirl where I talk about television. I decided that I wanted a whole blog dedicated or vlog dedicated to talking about television because I watch so much television and I love analyzing the cultural um, nuances and I also like studying the social impact of the stories and also how social media and the audience consumes um, the media that they watch. So first on my list of shows is The Rich Man's Daughter, which is a soap opera in the Philippines. The Rich Man's Daughter. Filipino culture is very, very important to me, along with its media. I will probably critique the hell out of this show while simultaneously tr try to explain to the more international audience why the show is important. The Philippines is a very, very traditional country. Its values are deeply embedded in religion and a lot of issues are still very, very taboo, including LGBT issues. This is the first, first TV show about lesbians. So let's reel it back in since I may be Filipino, but I also grew up in America for the most part. The first mainstream shows about LGBT issues were things like The L Word and Queer as Folk. They were very, very raunchy and very sexualized. Then there was a teen show on Nick called South of Nowhere that dealt with issues of LGBT in, the, the, in a younger community. Why am I pointing out these shows since they're American TV shows? It just goes to show how far we've gotten in, in the US culture with our, with our LGBT media, media. Now there are shows like Orphan Black and The 100 and so many shows that normalize LGBT characters. That being said, the Philippines is not even near there. Like I said, it's, it's a culture based on, on its tradition and its religion. The Rich Man's Daughter is the first of its kind. Previously to this was My Husband's Lover, which was a gay-centric show. It's only been recently that there have been Filipino lesbians in the limelight, such as Isa Segura and Sharice Mpenko. Let me veer away from the LGBT issues. The Philippines and the way that TV works there is that it manufactures romances on screen. And it's not just in like, oh, Bella and Edward. I mean like, if Bella and Edward were great in Twilight, Bella and Edward, AKA Robert What's-His-Face and Kristen Stewart, they would just be making movies constantly together, movies and shows. That's how the Philippines works. If they had enough chemistry, they would be constantly churned out into more TV shows so that they could capitalize on their chemistry. And it's not just television, not just the shows. Uh, their variety shows are very important in the Philippines as well. The variety shows in the Philippines have each of these couplings singing or doing some other sort of, you know, form of entertainment for the audiences so that they can keep seeing these actors in their, in their world of chemistry on a, not just on, during the weekdays when the soap opera airs, but on the weekends when variety shows air. Why is this a problem? It's a problem because a lot of a lot of Filipinos cannot distinguish between character and actor because when you have the characters portrayed on screen with their chemistry, you see them as just those characters and those characters love each other. But then you start going with the variety shows and you have the same actors in the same roles of the characters. You forget that these actors have separated themselves from the characters at this point. So that's not enough analysis about you know, the media and the way that it's consumed in the Philippines. Let me tell you about The Rich Man's Daughter. The Rich Man's Daughter is about a girl named Jade who is the youngest in a very wealthy Chinese family in the Philippines. She's also the only girl and very catered to. She is very obedient and she loves her family, but she's also a little bit spoiled and very, very sheltered. They have set her up to get married to her high school sweetheart and she accepts this because that's her family plan. At the very, very beginning of the show, she states that she doesn't believe in soulmates until Althea. Althea is a lesbian, a femme lesbian, which is very uncommon in the media in the Philippines. She meets Jade and they, you know, 
immediately have sparks. Jade has this crazy ass gay panic because, well, to her, um, being gay is kadiri, which is gross, which is disgusting, which so many words that make me think of bugs getting squished. And I hate the word kadiri. Their moral values are so are so outdated. So the show has no lead up to these like instances. It's all just like, you know, kind of like a fucking comet hitting Jade and then suddenly she's in love with with um, Althea and there's nothing that can stop her from, from loving this other woman. And it it right now it's a little weird because it's we're we're at the end of week two. And they've already, like, you know, they've already said I love yous, and she's breaking up with her fiancé, and oh, there's so much drama. Yes, there's a lot of drama. It's a fucking soap opera, guys. Get over it. Let me veer back again into the audience issues with the show. It's on GMA Network, a basic channel, basic cable channel. That means the wider audience of the Philippines is going to watch a show and think of the Philippines as like middle America where they don't really accept uh, gays and lesbians at all. And it's not that they're not going to get a viewership. They are. People consume media there like nothing. It's just TV is on. It's always on. And now that Tumblr has gotten a hold of this, this show because the fem slash, it's international viewership is going up. But therein lies another problem, AKA, just like the loss of cultural context. There's one scene in The Rich Man's Daughter where um, Jade is telling her best friend Sally about this person that she's now in love with, who she's going to leave her fiance for. And in the Philippines, we have no, no gender specific pronouns. So when we say like her or him, it's just the word sha. So it's like sha ang mahal ko, which is that is the person I love, sha, him, her, whatever. Jade is, is talking to her friend Sally, and she slips and says, her. Her? Her? I mean his. Wait lang ah. And in the Philippines, like, God, we always get our fucking pronouns mixed up because we don't use gender-specific pronouns. It just gets mixed up and messy, and nobody really bats an eye to it. So when Sally... Here's her, she goes, her? But she doesn't think twice of it because she's just like, oh, you messed up on your pronoun in English because, well, we don't speak English very often. When the international audience saw that scene, they were like, oh, Sally totally suspects. And I'm just like, Sally just totally thinks her friend just made a mistake. Other cultural differences is the amount of family drama in this show. I mean, yes, yes, we all have our family drama, but then like, this is like, Hardcore family drama, right? Well, that's kind of how it is in the Philippines. We don't shy away from the family drama because family is the center of our lives. So when there's family drama, it's like, bring it up a notch, let's show it all on screen. <laughs> so when people watch the show, they're like, oh, everybody's crying, there's so much crying, and everybody is screaming. Well, that's, that's, how it is in in a Filipino household. It's just, you know, full uh, full blown emotions at you all the time. It's a, it's a little overwhelming. Also, I know that the international viewers are watching it with subtitles on Daily Motion or whatever, but even those subtitles get a little lost in translation. Because there are some words in Tagalog that are not that are non existent in English. One example that isn't actually in the show, but I love pointing it out, is the word kilig. So the word kilig is a noun, and it's basically, in Tumblr terms, means feels. Like, uh, oh, that show gives me feels. So, oh, that show gives me kilig. It's that feeling, that like, yee feeling where you flail and you squeal and you whatever. And so kinikilig ako is just like, this phrase that's so great to use because it just encompasses how you feel about your OTP. But there's no direct English translation. I feel like there's so much I can talk about with The Rich Man's Daughter just, just because of like 
the topic that it has and like how it relates to the international consumption of media nowadays and I don't even know where to go from here but it, this is only the first Cha watches television video so if you want to leave any suggestions on topics specifically about the rich man's daughter and anything I can talk about in especially if you are an international viewer who wants to know more about Filipino culture and Filipino media leave a comment below if you want to suggest some other shows that I should um, talk about the next one on my list is currently iZombie because I really really I like iZombie um, but you should also leave comments below and don't forget to subscribe and you can follow me on Twitter and leave me messages there too. I love talking about TRMD, so if you if you want to give me give me a little like, you know, tweet just to just to flail about the rich man's daughter and how much you love Gladys de, Cast de Castro, that'd be cool. All right, cool. This is this is cool. Uh, let's watch more television and I will see you next time.